Okay, I'm going to be doing a review here on a uh, case. This is the case only, not the system. It's the uh, Predator G3710. And there's been uh, an abundance of these cases popping up on eBay and I think even Amazon and stuff. And uh, I think what's going on, first off, it's an ATX case, but it's a uh, mini ATX case. So right there, I mean, it's not a very big case. I'll put my hand up for reference, but I mean, it's small, it's tight, it's compact. As a matter of fact, in uh, most variations, it doesn't even come with the case fan. If you want to put the uh, stock case fan in there, I'll put a uh, picture of that right now. And also, as long as you stay within the following dimensions that I'll post now, you can pretty much use any fan you want. Uh, I don't know why there's so many of these. You know, the only thing I can think is that you get some gamers that see it, and, you know, it looks cool. I mean, that's how I originally found it. I wanted to get my son a gaming system. I kind of like that. You know, I'm old school, but, you know, my son's new school and new school and mid school gamers, they want the RGB and all that flashy shit. So I couldn't get my son to not want that case. So I thought, well, you know, CyberPC puts junk inside. They're not really a boutique. In a boutique, you're going to overpay for shit. You know, I couldn't build my own because my son needed to have that case. And, of course, I spoiled a little shit. So I thought, hey, I got an idea. You know, my wife's core, too, even though it's fine for what she does, she's about due for an upgrade. I'll buy the cyber PC with the piece of shit junk inside. Eh, it wasn't that bad, but you know what I mean. Not, not, not gamer worthy, as I say. And uh, swap all that stuff out, which I got it in a pile right there. I put all the new good stuff in there, all the Aces stuff, and I'm going to put the old stuff in this one, and I got lucky because that Cyber one gave me a micro ATX, and I wanted at least an ATX in there, so that's kind of why I'm going this route. I think this case, A, they had a lot left over because it wasn't popular. Like I said, you got to, this is old school appeal. You know, I'm 41 years old, and I think that looks pretty cool. You know, normally I I'm old school. I, I like a monochromatic computer case, and, you know, I still want to have all my drive bays and all that stuff. I still run everything on my actual test systems and my workhorses, but uh, let's start off here by kind of showing you. Here's the power button, and that's just, it's got a nice handle for you to be able to pick it up, and then right here, and I don't know why this has been kind of sticking but, uh, well, I can't remember what that bay was, but that's an open bay right there. Let me see if I could see anything in there. Yeah, that's just empty. So that's an open bay. And then on the... Uh, let me open this up here. Right here, it's got the uh, hot swappable SATA bay, which I actually think that's kind of cool. I wish all systems did that. You know, if you're running a server drive, it's kind of nice. Then you could have it in there and... You know, like for me, if I go to my mother-in-law's and I need to consume myself, I can, you know, put in a USB 3.0 adapter and, you know, do some network maintenance. You have a USB 3.0, actually 3. Point version 1. You got your uh, headphone jack, your microphone jack, and your micro SD card reader. And then where'd the old CD-ROM drive go? It's in there. Let me see where it's hiding here. Uh, 
Okay, that's my bad. The CD-ROM drive is not in there. It threw me off because in the auction it said it included it. And uh, I like CD-ROM drives. People say, oh, you don't use them for anything. Well, you're probably a low-level user. There's times you need a CD-ROM. There's times it's convenient. You know, my uh, wife just the other day got a picture CD for her uh, daughter's senior pictures. And even though we have, you know, 20 systems and most of them have CD-ROM drives, it's just, it's nice. You want to be backwards compatible. Then it becomes a tool as opposed to just a flashy gaming PC. But at any rate, let me go ahead and show you all around it here. Again, this is a review on the case. I've seen a couple where, you know, people want to show you what all is inside where they bought the whole system. You know, you don't have a glass panel. It has some feet, but there's really no ventilation down there. So I guess unless if this could be a ventilation, I really don't see a reason for the feet as the camera flips on you the other side is just completely blanked out they actually took the stickers off you could actually see the glue section and that kind of pissed me off because I mean what if I wanted to reproduce the stock system you know that wasn't in the fucking ad the ad showed the sticker on there As far as the back, it is nice in the fact that unlike super low-end cases, I mean, you're not going to really cut yourself. They have finished it nicely. It would have been nice if they blacked it out. But again, I mean, you're really not going for the whole RGB look at the back. I mean, they, they want the front to look kind of mean, you know. I get a kick out of this. I actually still use common parallel ports on my systems, but I'm surprised they even put those breakouts there. So that's where the fan would go if you do want to buy a fan for it. I think it's crazy that in 2018 you would not have at least one case fan, but I guess that's the way the Predator is doing it, and I guess nobody's had issues when it comes in their uh, stock form. So I'm going to go ahead and take the panels off. I'll probably swap out for thumb screws. Those are the kind of premium case screws that I like to use. Which leads us to our segue. If everybody would purchase at least one LTT store water bottle, we would never have to sell anything on our LTT store again. We'd be rich. Yes, it's my dream to one day work for Linus. And I'd do it nice and loud and energetic like Linus if my whole family wasn't sleeping right now. But they just use kind of old school case screws. Which of course I've pre-loosened. To make the video a little bit easier. See if I can do this one-handed. Yep, okay. There you go. So most of your cable management, they don't give you a bubble. So I mean it's snug. I'd say you got about maybe a quarter to three-eighths of an inch of cable management room, which isn't a super huge deal because again, this isn't a see-through case, so you're not trying to give it that Steve Jobs. Only one button, everything's clean kind of the trend now you know it goes back and forth you know one year you want everything clean and then the next year tech geek is being all like intricate and over the top and you know looks busy <coughs> now let's go to the main side here okay so your cd-rom drive should be at the top there's your uh sata bay your hot swap I got cables that are wrapped up in there. That's going to be for the front I.O. and everything. They do give you some cable management clips, which is kind of nice. And then as far as the uh, hard drive caddy for your 
you could fit two of them which if you could see there you got a screw down there and I think that's it I'll get oh and these two up here one two three that slides out and you can screw your drives in and then even though they don't give you a 2.5 adapter you see one two three four you can actually screw one here the bad thing about that is you knock off one of your 3.5 so if you wanted to have three drives you would have to find a way to rig it underneath upside down or something not not an issue for most people uh two things i'm really trying to figure out what's this you know i've been around computers a while built my first one in the mid 80s i i thought i've seen it all and like what's this even when I see the reviews that people, you know, have the pre-built system, I mean, it doesn't seem to do anything. So maybe I'm just ignorant and stupid and it's obvious, but if somebody wants to post a comment on what the actual purpose of that is, I'd appreciate it. And then the second confusing thing are these leads right here, okay? You got one black wire and a white wire, and I don't know how good my camera's going to focus, but on each, yeah, I can't get a good focus right now. On each of these tips, I don't know if you've ever replaced like a cell phone screen and seen the little wires for the antenna that are kind of tedious and, you know, they, they snap on. That's what those have. I don't know what that's for. So what I'm going to do, I want to show you where it leads to. You got to pop the front off. There's no hardware. It's just these three tabs. And then those same three tabs are on the other side. So you basically just kind of tab up. And you, it needs two hands, so I'm going to have to put you on pause. But you kind of work the one side, and you kind of like this a little bit. And then do the other side, and it pops right off. So let me go ahead and pause you. Go to these little metal things. Here's the white one. It's not very good lighting, but there's the black one. And they don't appear to be LED lights for the hard drive or anything. They actually ground out. Both of them ground out to the chassis. And I'm not focusing very good today. Okay, putting the uh, front back on. You just gently line it up. And when all the tabs are where they should be, easier with two hands again, but as you can see, it just closes right up. Case is made pretty well. That's what I like about this at the uh, price point that they're selling on eBay. For an extra 15 20 bucks you get a case that weighs more this one came to uh, 13.8 pounds versus under five pounds for a lot of the cheap cases and the uh, stamp steel as you can see it's not easy to bend with my finger like the cheap cases so it's actually pretty quality but i mean it, it's acer it's from a stock system i mean what do you expect And back to the front, the uh, famous headphone holder that I probably don't even have to review that you hang headphones from. May not be a feature everybody will use, but you can kind of see how that works with a set of headphones. So if you have it on your desktop next to your monitor, that might be convenient. Okay, so we were on these hair wires. Okay, I went ahead and uh, took out that screw, that screw, and that screw. I figured it'd make it a little easier to get the uh, micro mini, sorry, mini ATX motherboard in there. And I can go ahead and mount my uh, 
SSD. That also gives you more room too. We'll have to see when it's all mounted up. But I have a feeling you don't have a lot of room for a video card, but that would give you the room. Okay, as far as uh, motherboard standoffs, I went ahead and uh, ordered some cheap and from China. It just said motherboard standoffs. I didn't realize that they were going to be the wrong size. I always thought those were kind of universal. They always seem to be, but that's extremely too small. So I got lucky and I got a bag of excess hardware I've collected over the years and I was able to fish out enough of them. They're the uh, larger size with the larger head and more of the fine thread not to be confused with the larger one with the coarse thread if that helps you out if I could figure out a uh, size I'll go ahead and throw it on here when I edit but uh, I guess I could have pulled the standoffs out and used the ones I got but I kind of like the bigger hardware it aligns better with the newer modern motherboards but I was lucky I had all of them it's uh one two three four five six seven eight nine would be oh, try to angle here nine would have been here but for some reason they didn't feel to include it so if that really bugs you you could probably tap it and uh do all that just be careful when you're pushing in and pulling out anything down on this corner which is really going to be mainly uh, SATA and IO so at least you're not pushing or pulling that hard but yeah good thing is I had I had the hardware bad thing is now I think I only have one more large left out of that bag so I'm probably gonna have to collect some more of those Okay, a tip on your uh, motherboard. When you go to hook up the uh, panel connections, let me try to get the lighting here. See how you can see that written down? You may want to make a note of that. I just kind of did it like that. It's a little sloppy, but you can uh, keep up with it. The uh, first eight pins are your primary pins, what most of your systems are going to use, and the rest are usually just for other accessories and stuff, but those are the important ones. And uh, the reason I would write it down and or take a picture before you install your motherboard is that it's real hard to see that once the motherboard's installed. And depending on your motherboard, like uh, the one I'm putting in here, it's a gigabyte AX370M-DS3H and as you can see the uh, manual is just a folded piece of paper very simple and it does not give you the readouts for your panel it would have been nice but they don't give it to you whereas like the new motherboard that this one you know It gives you a nice manual and it's actually in there and that's kind of nice so the other reason you would like to do that is like on the conventional systems everything's color-coded so it's a lot easier to figure out but you'll see on a lot of these see-through gaming systems and I left the wires pulled out for you they're all black so when you get into the positives and the negatives it could be a real pain figuring out which is which and if you lose track of that, <coughs> you literally are going to have to take the switch, take the front panel off, put a voltmeter on there, test your polarities. Uh, well, let me take it back. Let me uh, go, go back on that. The uh, switches, you can reverse polarity, so it doesn't matter. But a lot of the other stuff, it does matter. Sometimes it either won't work, or worst case scenario, it'll short out the motherboard. So... You want to get the polarities right, and even if like a switch where you can reverse it, you still technically have polarities that are more correct to do it that way. 
and depending on the switch if it's sharing the uh, power for illumination maybe when it's on it won't illuminate and when it's off it'll illuminate so you could get weird little things like that but the other reason to have this list is say you're using a system where they're all black and you don't know what they are or whatever and one gets unplugged it's going to help you to have this ready to go when it comes time to plug it back in Then the first thing you want to do is put the uh, back panel shield on there. It just snaps into place, but it is kind of delicate and cheap and flimsy, so be gentle with that. You know, I would kind of start with a corner and then just kind of, that's what I did, worked its way and popped it in there. Okay, I went ahead and got the uh, motherboard in there. Strange thing about this case, it's got an extra standoff here, it's missing one here, and an extra standoff there. The uh, weird thing is, I don't think you're going to find a mini ATX form factor that's that wide. I'll actually go ahead and post the uh, form factor picture now. But at any rate, you only have the one, two, three, four, three, four, five, six. So you don't have a whole lot, you can see that flex of support on the right side of the board. So when you're plugging in your, your main power harness, you're going to want to support it from the back. Same with your uh, SATA. And then of course these you don't push that hard. So yeah, your panel, you should be okay, and then this is all supported. Now I do want to add, if you're doing this, <coughs> ideally you should be wearing an anti-static bracelet that's uh, connected to ground. Back in the old days, you had to do that. I mean, I remember when everything was ISA, and if you didn't do that, I mean, you were flirting with the devil. You're probably going to blow it up. You know, and uh, yeah, back when everything was ISA and uh, PCI became like what AGP was and then PCIe for video cards. But at any rate, you probably don't want to do it on carpet, especially without the anti-static bracelet. But nowadays, everything's coated. Things don't usually blow up. And uh, I feel like living on the wild side. Okay, getting the uh, motherboard hookups done here. For starters, here's your power switch. It's going to be the uh, green, white, blue, white cable. And as you can see, it routes nicely through this piece right here. And at least on this motherboard, it's going to be your top left. And you want to have where it's printed front facing up. You may want to double check all that, but for 99% of the situations, that's going to work. Because that's what you're plugging into right there. And that's uh, a four-way harness. It's got your power LED and your uh, power switch. And you can see the plus, minus, plus, minus. And there you go. Plus, minus, plus, minus. As far as your uh, USB three that harness is pretty easy to put in and it's going to have a notch on one side where it only fits one way and you'll know because it'll be raised on the connector and cut out usually on the top so that'll only plug in one way then you're going to have your audio and same thing the audio is only going to fit in one way because there's a pin missing and that pin won't have a hole the only one that may uh, get you a little bit is going to be this yellow one, which is your media card reader, which actually works with USB. I'm going to guess this is a USB 2, but I don't know for sure, but it's all backwards compatible. You're going to notice that it also, if I could get it to focus here, that last slot on the right here 
is closed. And when you look at the pins, see how that left one and that left one, because you got a USB 1 header and a USB 2 header. It doesn't necessarily mean USB 1, USB 2. It's just header number 1 and header number 2. I believe they're both USB 2.0 on this motherboard. Again, the manual doesn't go that in depth, but I'm pretty sure. But you could see how that'll fit. So you want to have your notch on the one side. So, uh, try to do this with the camera in my face here. There you go. Okay, as far as your uh, hot swappable goes. Oh, up here, my bad. Your power, of course, we're going to wait till we put the power supply, which is a top mount on this case. And then uh, your SATA cable, I routed around, and this is going to depend on your setup. But I put it on the third one. On this motherboard, sometimes it's SATA 1, SATA 2, SATA 3, 0, 1, 2, 3. My bottom one is zero, and I'm going to make that my system hard drive. The second one, I'm going to make my secondary hard drive. And then my third one, which is where I got it plugged in, is going to be my uh, swap, hot swappable. Okay, I went ahead. Let me try to get a flashlight on here. And I plugged in the rest of my SATAs. So I'm using three. If you can kind of see that. There we go. And I just have them off to the side here because I haven't set up my drives yet. But basically, that's everything all set up. So that's pretty minimum bare bones for what you're going to set up. And when I'm all done, we'll put some zip ties on this for cable management. Okay, I got the power supply in. Haven't run any of the cables yet. It's a real snug fit, especially with the other sides of these uh, rivets sticking out, but it'll go. Standard size power supply. I went with the uh, Best Buy Special, the Insignia 520 watt. I wanna say I got that for like 30 bucks online. Nice budget power supply, and if Best Buy approves it, I think it won't burn my house down. We'll go ahead and start routing these cables. Okay, I got all the power supply stuff routed. So you can kind of play with it for cable management. Get it off to the side. Put some zip ties in, keep it all neat. And of course this is sloppy, but this will be for the drives. We'll get that in in a second. And of course, with the side hanging off, I made sure to support it with my hand while I plug this in. And I also got the memory module in. Anybody used to the uh, old school memory knew that it was kind of like 1, 2, or 1, 2, 3, 4. Well, that's got changed up. I guess it's not too recently now. But uh, basically, from left to right... On this motherboard, they're going to call it DDR4, DDR3, DDR2, and DDR1. But you could also say that conventionally, it's known, and we'll go left to right again, is DIMM B2, B1, oh, I reversed that, my bad, left to right, DIMM1, Cancel that out from left to right. B2. Cancel that left to right. B1. B2. A1. A2. Now when you use one stick, and this gets a little bit confusing, you want to put it in either what they call the DDR2 or the B2. And that's with one. And that's because the way it's set up, to put it in layman's terms, when you got two sticks of good RAM, they work together. 
So you'd want it in either the uh, DDR3 one, one stick there, and then one in the DDR3, you know, or if you want to say one in A1 and one in B1. But when you use only one stick, you want it in this B1. Kind of goofy, but that's how it works. That was a leftover stick of memory I got. I actually got a clone of it coming in the mail, and I'll have two. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get the uh, SSD hooked up on those four holes. Granted, the case didn't come with any screws. So you're going to have to figure this out. Uh, the power supply used the same screws as the motherboard, but of course these are smaller. They still, they still seem to be like a fine thread, but uh, if I can find a size on them, I'll post it now. If I find it later, I'll put it in the uh, crotch box. But, yeah, they're pretty small. Okay, at this point, we pretty much got the cable management and everything under control. Because the CD-ROM drive wasn't there, it's a good place to kind of rubber band. I used just the rubber bands that came with the power supply. Everything I don't need and kind of tuck it up there. Same with uh, where I branched off. For the hot swappable, it was able to just kind of tuck in there and clip in, keep our cables out of the way. I guess if I was OCD, you could make this a little better. Maybe like find a way to zip tie it and keep it down like that. But I'm not too picky. This isn't going to be an open case where you look at it, and I don't think it's going to impede much temperature wise. But at any rate, the only thing uh, that I don't have finished on it right now is I don't have the secondary hard drive. I actually need to get a, an SSD to take the mechanical out of that one. And then uh, I'll take that one and I'll put it right up here. So what I did was I just kind of tucked in this harness. You know, here's my, my uh, SATA to motherboard and my SATA power. So it'll look better once it's actually in there and it's clipped and then I can kind of clean those up a little bit but at this point all it needs is a video card okay I got the secondary hard drive in there only on the left side this predator case has a proprietary screw and granite I have not been able to locate them yet if I do I will put it in the uh, crotch box I don't know if I'm going to be able to, though. I looked pretty hard, and I couldn't find them. So, that's not horrible. It's sloppy, but you can get away with that. It's not going to touch anything. But, uh, as far as video card, since this is my wife's computer, and she's a medical biller and coder, I went with an NVIDIA Quadro K1200. Because that gives the, uh, Mini display port out for four monitors. And it's also got the uh, display port. I believe it's the 1.2 where you can daisy chain. I'm not daisy chaining though. I'm giving each monitor a dedicated cable. And for Wi-Fi, I went with the MSI. It's a wireless AX and it's got the Bluetooth. As you can see, it adds the card. And I'm keeping the external antenna the way that one is. And I'll put in a picture of the bottom of it now. That's what I meant when I was talking about like a PCI card adapter. This actually comes with the adapter. 
I could have used the antennas and kept it clean that we left coiled up right there. But I think that looks kind of badass. You know, it kind of goes along with the, uh, the whole look of the case. Sorry about the bouncing camera. But there you go. Look at that. I'm sure somebody out there can appreciate that. It just kind of looks like it was made for it. Give it a little shark fin. And then, of course, you saw I inserted earlier. I went with the Noctua fan. And I believe that's the largest you'll be able to fit. So that'll give it some good cooling. Especially when I, with the Quadro, I want to have the fan. I was using a old uh, NVIDIA, I want to say 700 series. One of my extra cards I got laying around for test purposes. And let the wife use that until I decided on a video card. The nice thing about the uh, those K1200 Quadros is they're business machine cards. You know, you're not going to do much more than 1080p on all four monitors. So it's like, you know, it's not a gamer's wet dream, but business-wise, it's excellent. And because it's so popular in the business world, once again, you got a lot of takedown systems where people are selling them on eBay for a good price. But otherwise, that's about it. It'll kind of give you some build ideas if you want to build one of these cases. Not beautiful, but not ugly. Gets the job done. Let me go ahead and put the side panel on, and I'll give you a shot from all around all four sides. Actually, I don't think we'll have enough light. Should have had a flashlight handy. But since I threw that DVD in there, yeah, you can kind of just barely see it back there right in the center where it plugs in the SATA and the power. Now it's pretty straightforward. Just took standard mounting screws. Alrighty. My terminal is finished. So there you go. You can see it from the front. I like it. I think it's a nice aggressive case. I got a Two TJ-10, Silverstone TJ-10s that I just bought. Getting hard to find, but I found them. I love those cases. They're premium. I'll eventually have some videos on those. But my plan is, I got a silver TJ-10 and a black TJ-10. I want to build my wife a new computer. Something a little more powerful. Something a little flashier. And give her my black TJ-10. And I'm going to take the silver TJ-10. And then I want to take the Acer, and that right there is a Gen 4 Intel machine, i3. It's been my media server, which actually, since I only have a 1080p television, works just fine. But it's starting to get dated, and I think that would look a lot better. So that's kind of the game plan. For now, my, my wife will run this one, and then probably next tax season, I'll do up the TJ10s and... Maybe I'll even make some videos on there. Thanks for watching.